Hey guys, welcome to my 200 subscriber special. Today we'll be doing the Q&A, followed by a submission video coming soon. Um, the form to that will be in the description down below. So yeah, let's get started. So first question we have is from Rank Creeper, and that is, what are your top five favorite record labels? Oh God. <laughs> uh, okay, so, um. The main one right now is Future Classic, uh, that's home to Down to Earth as well as Flume's discography, um, a lot of really underrated artists. Um, other uh, big favourites, uh, well I would say Monster Cat but they've fallen off a lot recently. Um, I'd say Warp Records is probably my other big favourite, Mousetrap as well, um, Amada Music's actually been really consistently good. And, oh god, I think maybe Inspected would be my fifth, um, although there are a fair few other labels that I would put in that position. But yeah, I just think um, those five have been the most consistent favourites of mine. Um, there might be some other ones that I've missed out on because I've covered a lot of artists and a lot of <laughs> labels releases. But yeah, no, those five are easily my favourites. Next one is from Syndra and it's, what is your favourite Among Us colour? Oh, um... God, you're putting me on the spot here, man. Um, I'd probably say yellow, just because yellow is my favourite colour. But, um, I'm a big fan of brown as well. Uh, <laughs> I haven't played Among Us in ages, dude. <laughs> this next one's from AccuGem, and since the second and third questions are pretty much got the exact same answer, I'll be doing the first question, which is, what is the worst album I've ever listened to? Um, there's a few. I'd say the worst that I've... Uh, heard in its entirety is Corey Feldman's Angelic to the Core, which is just absolutely awful. Um, although Eric Hord's Grind is pretty far up there, that album is just terrible. Um, although there are a few that I've um, heard snippets of that I just quite frankly never want to listen to. For example, you've got Chris Brown's Heartbreak on a Full Moon, uh, Psychosexuals album that came out last year, which is genuinely, like, genuinely sounds awful. Um, and oh, what was it called? Uh, th there's like some other ones that um, have kind of escaped my mind at the moment, but yeah, at the moment it's Corey Feldman Angelic for the Core or Eric Cord's Grind. Next question from TJ, and it's um, Are any artists that you're going to rank in the future? Also, congrats. Thank you, man, first off. Um, but yeah, no, uh, there are a fair few that I wanted to do discography rankings of. Um, if you remember an old announcement video that I made, there were a few that um, my community voted on. Uh, for me to do a series on. Um, there is one that I'm actually considering starting as soon as this video is done. Um, let me just say it's a popular name, but it's one that not very many people like. <laughs> That's pretty much all I got to say for that. Uh, next question is from Escapist1, and it's a pretty long one. Uh, when did you start becoming actively interested in the music you listen to? And how did your general music taste lead you to start a ranking channel? All right, so I, <laughs> a bit of a confession here. So this was back in 2015 when I got my first CD, which was Galantis' Pharmacy. <laughs> yeah, but um, that's when I became actively interested in electronic music and the type of music that I listened to. Um, I think around 20, uh, mid 2017 was when I really got involved in like music review uh, related stuff. Um, because I actually had a blog uh, that I would frequently post reviews to back in the day, which is uh, no longer active, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm kidding. But um, yeah, that's basically um, what led me to start making a ranking channel. And I think just the fact that I've got such a varied um, array of different genres and albums that I like listening to, I think that's also another thing that led me to where I am with this channel. So, from Hawksy, thoughts on Outside the Box Paco Trap Remix. Okay, these are my thoughts. I can't find it. Next one from Shy Guy. When did you start getting involved in the ranking community? Okay, so first, my first video was in September 2019. I don't remember the exact uh, day, but I know it was in sept September 2019. I can't speak English, oh my god. Um... But in terms of actually getting involved in the community, I think I started uh, getting involved around the uh, beginning of 2019, um, th around the time that uh, Matter had transitioned into Hideout. Yeah, um, but yeah, that was I was mainly a commenter back in that day, 
Um, but then in September, I just figured it was worth me having a go at it, and obviously it's turned out well. So, next up we got Stan um, with the question: What do you think is the best reason for starting a ranking channel? Or um, I think the main thing that's uh, appealing about a ranking channel is just the fact that you can voice your opinions freely on a variety of different things. That's one of the reasons why um, I wanted to make the transition over from ranking um, instead of doing my vlog. Um, especially considering the editing process and the like listening process is a lot quicker when um, when you just uh, rank stuff in comparison to reviewing it. Um, that's also one reason why I haven't really done reviews on this channel in comparison to rankings. I just feel it's a lot easier, especially with uh, bigger albums, you know? And I always like comparing um, my favourites and least favourites on albums, so that's one of the reasons why I think it's just fun to start a ranking channel. And um, I've always um, stated this, but uh, this is to a lot of you guys. Um, don't take it too seriously. Well, and well, this is mainly to anyone who's um, considering starting a ranking channel. Just don't take it too seriously. It's just your opinions. You're having fun with it. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot to it. Um, that's ma that's probably the main reason why I've started a ranking channel. It's just because it's fun for me. I like talking about music. I like comparing music. It's just yeah. Next, we've got Mr. Monster Cat who asks, "How did you find out about Monster Cat?" Um, so this links back to what I was saying about uh, the matter uh, to hideout split. This was basically the time when I had found out about Monster Cat at all. Um, it, I think it was around the end of Matter's uh, run before they changed over the hideouts. Um, I just, uh, I think I just ran into one of their videos while I was looking through music related content, and I gave it a watch. I think it was Monster Cat on Cage Volume Five ranking. And I was really um, curious, so I kept watching um, more of their content as I got more into the label um, because I really liked Uncaged Volume 5, yeah, seriously. Um, and yeah, that just got me into Monster Cats, um, and now they're pretty much a big part of my life even though they're not one of my favourite labels anymore. Um, so this is from my fellow Aussie ranker and collaborator for the Prodigy series, Hambone H. Firstly, I appreciate the, uh, the nice words there, that means a lot. Um, but the question is, if I could ideally do anything I want to in life, what would I like to do? So, um, this is kind of a bit skewed because I'm doing a university course on it, but um, music production related stuff like being a DJ, a sound engineer, just a producer for films, um, that's like the main thing I want to go down. If we're talking non-job related, I'd like to travel around the world. Um, I mean, obviously it's going to be a while because of the pandemic, but um, yeah, no, especially to Europe and to a few countries in Asia like Japan and South Korea, like those are my dream locations, dude. <laughs> um, and uh, not to spoil much, but there's people I want to see outside of um, Australia. And um, the closer we get to actually doing that, the better, in my opinion. Now for this next one by a guy called 74 is an inside job by 7-Eleven. God, that's a great name. Um, he asks, how long have you been listening to music in general? And what is one song that despite flaws, big or small, you hold dearest to and why? So, um... I've been listening to music pretty much my whole life, at least since I was five, when my parents started playing um, songs like Don't Bring Me Down by um, EFO, or ELO, sorry, oh my god. Um, and uh, Some Boys Are Loved by Queen. Uh, those two songs are like my childhood, and obviously in the latter case, it appeared on my favourites of all time list. Um, but if we're talking songs that I hold dearest to me, there's uh, two that I um, think about. The first of which is uh, Skrillex's uh, song, uh, First of the Year Equinox, uh, which came out. I think on the More Monsters and Sprites EP. Um, that song has not aged well, to say the least. Um, and yeah, you can you can definitely tell that um, it was Skrillex trying to ride off of the success he got with the Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites EP. Um, and yeah, those chipmunk vocals haven't really aged all that well. But um, I don't know, just the song is like basically what introduced me to a lot of electronic music in the first place. Um, so yeah, that song hold, like I hold that song really close to my heart. The other one is by a um, Australian pop punk band that broke up in 2015 called Short Stack. The song's called Planets, um, and you can definitely tell it's dated to 2010 and 2011. But just the hook on that song, dude, the the whole like 
the vocal is sounds fantastic the hook is incredibly earwormy like that it's just never escaped my head since i've listened to it and um that song is associated with a lot of uh memories of primary school and high school that i like to keep so yeah that song is just like really personal to me and even if it's not my favorite song in the world or anything i still hold it really close to my heart so this next one's from rainview and i just gotta say before anything else wow like this is really like <laughs> Oh god, god rain, you're really good at <laughs> Oh, I'm flattered dude, but um, yeah, he basically asked once you look back as memory floods back to you As far into the past as you'd like to start from and slowly return right to this moment Tell me describe the path that led you here to reach all of us. Was it beautiful? Okay, so um, I basically um, got into this um, whole stage through um, watching videos from uh, Hideout and Sammy, especially. Um, like Sammy is pretty much the reason uh, why I've met a lot of people in this community, and um, like including a lot of my collaborators and people I'm in ranking groups with. Basically, I joined that uh, community in late twenty, um, the community server in late twenty nineteen, and I just immediately uh, found that I belong there. So. I pretty much uh, stuck around, talked to a lot of people, and before we, before I knew it, I was part of a ranking group called uh, called the Cynical Rankers, which is now uh, the Loop Project. Um, basically, from there, I met um, my close friends like Junu, Stan, Dan, EXO, TJ, like a lot of people through that um, particular uh, ranking group, as well as um, obviously I met. Uh, the person who, uh, who gave me this question, uh, Ryan, um, as well as a fair few other people that <laughs> there's so many I could shout out right now. But um, basically through uh, Sammy Server, I met everyone in this community and it got to the point where um, after Sammy deleted his server uh, twice, <laughs> no offense, Sammy. Um, I basically ended up joining a lot of other uh, servers. I ended up joining uh, 747, um, a few of my friends' servers, and but um, yeah, 747 was basically what changed my status in this community. Um, I was really active there uh, pretty much the whole time until fairly recently where I started my own server. Uh, Link in the description. Um, and um, yeah, that's how I got into 747. That's how I met a lot of other people. And then I decided to make my own server, which has turned out ridiculously well. It's like over a hundred people at the moment, which is just... Oh, dude, it's, it's crazy, dude. And um, was it beautiful? Yes. I am internally grateful to have been part of this community for over a year now. And I don't see myself leaving it anytime soon. Uh, yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Um, so this next one's from Fabio, and I'm I'm just going to assume he's asking, um, Aphex Twin or Aphex, which is better? Um, well, obviously I'd say Aphex Twin, just because he's got, um, well, I mean, obviously both are the same guy, but just the Aphex Twin name's got a lot more great releases than Aphex. I mean, I like Aphex's stuff. I really like that Orphan DJ Selic um, album that they really that he released in 2015, I think it was. But, um, no, Aphex Twin's got Selected AMB Works OM2, Drug Use, Selected AMB Works A592, just Come to Daddy, there's so many great releases under Aphex Twin, um, and, yeah, I don't think there's gonna be any, uh, difference, which one I prefer, uh, for, like, in the foreseeable future. Uh, next one is from, um, my main man, RockGeo0407L, um, and he asked, what is your favourite Jean-Michel Jarre album? Also, congrats on 200 subs. Thank you, man. Um, ah, oh, see, this is hard because I haven't listened to all of Jean-Michel Jarre's discography yet, but if we're just going off of the albums I have heard, um, I mean, Oxygen is a classic. Um, I've, I don't think it's going to be beaten anytime soon. Um, although, I will say, Electronica 2, uh, The Heart of Noise, and um, Oxygen 3 were really close. Like, those two albums are fantastic. Also, Sessions 2000 is quite underrated, too. Um, yeah, that's something me and the wonky angle can agree on there, you know? <laughs> but yeah, no, Oxygen is easily my favourite uh, drum Michelle Jar album, and I'll stand by that. Um, this next one's from L Galaxy, and he asks, any tips on ways to find smaller underground artists? Congrats on 200, by the way. Again, thank you very much. Um, I'd say, like, see, this is hard, because I'm not usually a 
um, underground sort of art, um, artist guy. Um, as you guys know, I'm very into mainstream music. Um, but what I do, right, is there's a fair few options. So the main one is um, I just usually find related artists on Spotify um, to artists that I actually really like, and then I end up discovering some gems. Um, this also helps. Um, uh, especially with playlists because I can find a lot of really underrated artists that are rarely get any attention and um, Discover that they're actually really good. Um, I think there's one there was like an um, An ambient artist that I just thought of recently that makes these fantastic like Absolutely huge sounding songs and he's got only like what? Um, under 10,000 followers, which is a crime um but yeah, there's also um, a channel that I watch who you guys may have seen a lot on my channel, especially on the Mega Collab series, um, The Wonky Angle. He's pretty much one of the main reasons why I've found a lot of underground stuff. Um, his Some Stuff I've Missed series is basically like a godspeed when it comes to finding underrated artists. Um, another thing I also do is um, maybe look through SoundCloud. Um, see, I'm not usually a SoundCloud guy, but... Um, recently I've started to uh, look through SoundCloud and obviously you guys have seen Kaiba, um, Eric, T well not Eric, Patricia Taxon is also a name that I found through uh, SoundCloud and Avas and Morflay who I did a ranking of uh, probably a year ago at this point I also found through uh, SoundCloud. Yeah there's like so many different ways you can find small underground artists, it's just a matter of going out of your way to search for them and um, finding them out through whatever means necessary, basically. Okay, this next one is from Twitch, and he asks, favorite song from a genre I don't like slash hate, and vice versa. So, um, one of the most notable is uh, Always Do by Kid Leroy. See, I really, really don't like his style of rap, but that song is surprisingly really infectious. Like, I really like it. Um, there's also a few like Train Food by XXX Um there was one song from Night Punk's last EP that I really liked, even though that genre is definitely not for me. Um, yeah, those are the main ones for that. And for um, songs that I don't like from genres that I love, um, well, the main one is obviously uh, the Ilan Bluestone uh, Hypnotized Marcus Scholl's remix that... See, like, I love Trance, but that remix was just terrible. Like, it's gotten worse since my worst songs of 2020. Um, my worst monster cat releases of 2020 um there are a few others but really i'm not really like one to, f to focus on the um the bad songs from genres that i like especially when there's so much good shit out there you know but yeah those are my answers to that question this next one's from sammy and it's what does your among us play still say about your future college um, first off, it's not called college here, it's called university. Sammy, get it right. Um, and secondly, uh, fuck my play style. Um, my homies among us. Okay, this next one is from uh, Neo. And since I'm not answering the first question, I mean, I've already answered him uh, privately in DMs about it. But um, I'll be answering this next one, which is of every BT album, which is your favorite and what's your favorite song off of it? Um... Oh, you, you have to put me on the spot, dude. Um, I'd probably say my favourite right now is These Hopeful Machines. Um, and my favourite song off of that is The Lion Things. That song is just excellent. Um, although it's not my favourite song um, from BT. That's actually 13 Angels on My Broken Window Seal. That song's probably in my top 10 of all time at this point. Um, absolute masterpiece. Okay, so there's a fair few questions here from DC Ranks MC. Um, I'm just going to answer the first two. So my favourite food is probably... Oh, God. Um, if we're talking, like, full-on dinner, I'd say spaghetti bolognese. Um, if we're talking just regular, like, fruits, is easily watermelon and strawberries. Those two are my favourites by a mile. Um, and vegetables... Uh, carrots, probably. I mean, there are a lot of others that I could choose for that. Um, and favourite movie... Oh god, see I'm not a huge um, movie guy, I haven't watched a lot of movies in my life, but Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is just a classic and has been associated with my childhood, so that's probably my favourite movie of all time at the moment, although there, like I said there are a few others that I could choose from. Uh, next up from Waffles here we have, what's your three favourite matching colours? See I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of uh, green, 
yellow and red are the pan african colors those three just work off of each other really really well um another one well besides green uh yellow and white is also red blue and white for obvious reasons if you know me i'm australian <laughs> But yeah, no, those ones are my favorite three matching colors. Okay, this next one's from JSG Ranks, and he asks, Where did you meet Luna? Hope this isn't too personal of a question. Oh, no, it's not. It's definitely not. Um, I've been really open about this, but um, in my personal life and in on uh, YouTube and Discord. But yeah, basically, I met uh, Lu Luna through Discord. Um, my fellow uh, Concord Dawn... Um, member and a friend rigged basically introduced me to her and we got along really well obviously a lot of people know exactly where we are right now and i just gotta say first off like just oh man i'm so i'm ridiculously grateful that i met her and she always hold a special place in my heart i'll just say that <laughs> oh jesus um so this next one's from junak and i'm gonna answer the first two questions since the third one's a bit too personal for me um, but for the first one, uh, if you had to upload another type of content that isn't music related, what would it be? Um, oh god, um, I'd probably be a geography or a, um, gaming sort of channel, um, because I find both really intriguing. Uh, that's just, I don't know, I, it's good, it feels weird saying that because I'm really into music in comparison to those, but yeah, if there was another, uh, venue that I wanted to go down, it'd probably be one of those two. And the second question is, if you could listen to only one music genre for the rest of your life, what genre would it be? Oh, God. Um, I'd probably say Progressive House, to be honest, because I've listened to so much Progressive House over the years, and I've just not gotten sick of it at all. Like, I could listen to Dead Mouse's entire discography, like, on loop for the whole day, and I wouldn't get sick of it. Um, there are some others that I would probably put in that boat too like um i've really gotten into lo-fi recently thanks to luna of course but um other ones trans i'd say down tempo ambient um honest to god i could listen to a whole dark ambient slash noise project um or listen to a whole genre of, um like listen to that whole genre for the rest of my life and not get sick of it but yeah there's like um, see i'm not really into like one specific like i wouldn't be able to do that but yeah that's just my take on it this next one's from Grade 9 Physics, and he asks, What is your top five worst and best albums of all time? Okay, so um, since I've done the worst already, I'm going to talk about my five favourites, and because I don't really go out of my way to listen to bad albums. But um, right now, my top five, um, my favourite's Down to Earth. That's pretty much a given at this point. That album is a classic, and I really hope Fly Facilities release another album after that. Um, my second favourite is probably Aphex Twin's Drug Use. That project just hits me and it's a lot of nostalgia for me. BT's uh, The Social Machines will probably be number three. Um, honest to God, I think If The Stars Are Eternal, So New and I by BT is also my number four. And number five will probably be Selected Ambient Works Volume 2. I just, I love Aphex Twin's double albums so much. The next one's from Calvin Prime and he asks, do you have an opinion on Sonic Youth or any indie rock? Now, first off, I haven't heard of Sonic Youth, unfortunately, but in terms of indie rock, I'm a pretty big fan of it. I've gotten into that stuff recently. Like, most of rock music I've gotten into fairly recently. But um, I think indie rock has a lot of, like, really good artists. Like, my main one's Chet Faker. I'm, I know he's not entirely indie rock, but just hear me out. His stuff's, like, really consistently good, and he knows his way around really chill indie rock. Um, there's a lot of other ones, like Almost Monday, uh, the Head and Hearts I've gotten into recently. Um, there's, there's just like a lot of indie rock that I've really gotten into recently. And yeah, I like the genre. It's good. Next one's from Ecstasy7410. And he asks, how did you get into EDM? Okay, so this basically links back to what I was saying about Galantis. Um, I got the Galantis CD in, uh, uh, I think it was Christmas 2016. And I had already had a pretty um, on and off relationship with electronic music thanks to Skrillex. And I think I also remember hearing Dead Mouse's Rage Weapon back in the day, but um, that Galanta CD pretty much changed my life when it came to electronic music. I started getting into the more mainstream friendly stuff, hence why I'm a very mainstream oriented electronic guy. Um, started following the dance charts a lot, especially the, um, the hot dance charts, the main one uh, that Billboard publishes every week. 
and I suddenly started getting really into the sounds of electronic music and it also helped that I was watching The Wonky Angle at the time, like it was probably the first electronic focused channel that I ever watched. And yeah, I got into a lot of artists through him. I got into BT, got into Aphex Twins, I brought to Canada, like so many of Warp and Armada artists I really got into because of him. Uh, so yeah, that's how I got into electronic music. And I'm so grateful I did. Next from Payson Cardinal 17 uh, favorite video game. So um, if we're talking currently, my favorite video game is Overwatch. Um, that's been my favorite since it came out. Um, it holds up ridiculously well, but um, in terms of my favorite game of all time, um, like I'd probably say Banjo Kazooie to be honest. Like that game's held up ridiculously well, and it's still so much fun to play, especially on the Xbox. Um, yeah, I've, I've come back to that game a lot recently, and yeah, I found it, it's really, really good. <laughs> and it's been a favorite since my childhood, so it's got that nostalgic connection for me too. This next one's from Awesome8, and I'm going to answer the last two just because the first one I've already shown off in um, a previous video of mine. Go watch that if you haven't. Um, so first question, do you like pizza? Yes, I do. Uh, Margarita is probably my favorite. Um, I've grown a bit on Hawaiian, actually, not going to lie. But um, anyways, the and the other question he asked was, are you ever going to become a producer or stay as a Renko on YouTube? Um, I probably, like, see that's hard because I kind of dabble in both. Um, some of you may know that I contributed to the um, Etherreal um, compilation that uh, Luna made recently. And I'm going to continue contrib contributing to that. And I've also released a few songs on my SoundCloud, um, which I've shown off on my, on my public server, um, which you all should join if you haven't already. Um, so yeah, I'd probably dabble between both of them, to be honest. Um, stay in the same vein as, say, TVR Zorro, or... Uh, what was his name? Or Nighthawk did for a little while as well. This next one's from my close friend, Jake the Snake, and he asks, if you had not joined the ranking community or started YouTube, what would you be doing instead? Congrats on 300, best mate. Hey, thank you very much. But um, if I wasn't doing YouTube, um, I'd probably be still going down my line of being a music producer. Um, as you all know, like I said in the previous uh, question, I have done my own music. And I'm currently studying um, a music-based course in my university where I live. So um, yeah, I probably would still be going down the music route, but just in a different venue um, as a producer or a sound engineer. Um, also, I'd be getting involved in judo competitions a lot more because um, I used to get involved in those a lot and I've been doing judo for 10 plus years. But um, yeah, I should probably get back into that actually now that I think about it. This next one's from Grizzly Lumber, also known as Johnny, who's appeared in a few of my FX Twin Mega collabs. Um, actually, no, he's appeared in all of them. But um, he asks, you like a cheeky bit of Venetian snares? Um, yes, yes. I've heard a few um, of their albums. I think there was one, it, it was like the one that had the Minotaur on the, the I don't know how you say it, the Minotaur on the cover. Um, that album was really good. I also really liked um, that one about the cats and also the Hungarian album and the Chocolate Wheelchair album. All of those albums are really consistently good. Um, I still need to get into more of Venetian Snare's discography because I know his discography is huge, but yeah, I, I do like me a bit of Venetian Snare's and I should probably go and listen to them a bit more. Second to last one is from EXO and he asks, why do you always sound so dead when you do commentary? Um, first off, <laughs> <laughs> you dickhead, but um, no, nah, dude, I think it's just because uh, most of the time when I do commentaries It's like nine or ten o'clock at night time, and I'm just really tired um, And it's just that uh, I have a naturally deep voice and not very expressive one at that uh, Yeah, that's pretty much the explanation why I still sound as dead as I do even now And finally we end with the big one from Luna Congrats on 200 subs. Firstly, thank you very much. Um, pick your favorite question. I'm going to uh, answer all three of these just for your concern. So first question, what game or movie has the best soundtrack in your opinion? Um, oh, um, I, for games, I'd probably say Cyberpunk 2077. That game's soundtrack is phenomenal. Although the FIFA games have some really good soundtracks, probably one of the best things about the franchise and one of the only good things. But um, for movies, uh, Tron Legacy, Polar, um, what was that one? Hannah, um, the one the Chemical Brothers did the soundtrack for. And also, I gotta give a shout out to XOXO. That movie's soundtrack is really good and contains my favorite Galantis song, so that's 
a thing. Um, for question two, I know you don't listen to much rap, but favorite rap artist. Um, firstly, I do listen to a lot of rap. I've got a huge uh, collection of rap um, in my CD collection at the moment, and also my uh, vinyl collection. Um, but favorite rap artist, uh, I'd probably say Run the Jewels, uh, Kendrick Lamar. Of course, I've got to stick with him. He's a legend. Um, Outcast, uh, great. Um, oh, what's that one called? Um, Oh, Billy Woods, Aesop Rock, Anderson Park. There's like so many great acts in that vein that I could choose from. Um, and finally, the third question, and this one's a really good question, by the way. Um, are you planning on expanding the genres you do your rankings on? Yes. Um, I have been adventuring a little bit outside of uh, the typical ranking sphere, especially in this community. Um, like one of my most viewed videos is fucking Blonde by Frank Ocean. I mean, come on now. Um, but yeah, I have done a few rap albums, a few rock albums here and there, but I'm probably going to try and expand out a little bit more. Um, and I mean, like all the recommendations that you, Luna, give me, um, really help me with that regard. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, but yeah, no, that's, that's, that's pretty much what's going to happen. Um, I'm, I'm still going to stick to electronic, but I'm going to try and expand out a little bit more. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, this video has gone way too long. But yeah, I'm glad you all are interested in me and want to ask all these questions. It means a lot. Uh, thank you for 200 subscribers. Here's to hoping uh, for more in the future. And like I said at the beginning of this video, the um, form to the submissions page will be in the description and pinned comments. Um, rules will be on there. Please follow them. Um, otherwise, the submission will not get in. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing what you guys submit. Um, good luck. Thank you for watching.